well by now we are quite clear that usefulness of a capacitor comes from the fact that it stores energy that can be made available instantly we also know that the potential energy stored in a capacitor is a result of amount of work done to charge it or in other words you need to put effort to separate charges and put them on different plates and this effort is nothing but the work done that translates to potential energy of the capacitor now let us understand this concept a little mathematically so when we charge a capacitor and say that the final charge on it is q and the potential difference as a result of this charge is v we have a formula that connects v and q through the equation v is equal to q by c or q is equal to c v but let us consider a stage or an instant of time when the charging of the capacitor is happening and assume that say at time t the charge on the capacitor is small q and the potential difference is small v then we can say that v is equal to q by c and remember here that we can take the capacitance as capital c because it is a constant and depends only on the area of the plates and the distance d between them it has got nothing to do with what stage of charging you are at so at this time t we can say that the work done to move an additional charge dq is v dq which can be written as q by c times dq and as a side note i hope you recall that the potential difference between two points or v is equal to the work done in moving a unit charge between the two points and therefore we have the equation dw is equal to v dq now you must observe that each time we take charge or an electron from this plate to this plate the amount of work done keeps increasing because you're facing more and more repulsion from this plate on account of accumulation of more and more negative charge on this plate so in a way when you moved the first electron no work was done because there was no negative charge on this plate but as you kept moving electrons the amount of work required kept increasing hence you need integral calculus to find the total work done as you moved from charge 0 on the plate to final charge q so integrating both sides what we get is w is equal to integral of dw that equals 1 by c integral of q dq from 0 to final charge capital q and when you integrate this we find work done is half q square by c and when you discharge this capacitor by using it in some application say a flash bulb this is the work done by the electric field on the charge so during discharge the q value reduces from capital q to zero so if you recall the very famous formula that work done appears as stored potential energy we can say that w is equal to u is equal to half q square upon c which can also be written as half cv square or half qv in fact i would encourage you to draw a parallel of charging of the capacitor with a spring being compressed the more you compress a spring the more work needs to be done in compressing it further and this work done shows up as potential energy in the compressed spring that is half kx square and this situation of moving charge from one plate to the other is also quite the same we face more and more resistance like the spring as more charge moves from one plate to the other eventually when you have packed all the charge q on the plates by doing work in moving the charge what we have is build up of electric potential energy in the capacitor and interestingly you can see 
that the two formulas for potential energy are also quite the same that is 1 upon c is the equivalent of k here and q square is the equivalent of x square now there are two interesting observations that you should think about and crystallize in your mind one these equations tell us that capacitance measures the ability of a capacitor to store charge and potential energy so when a capacitor is connected to a battery that provides potential difference v you can load up more charge on the capacitor if you increase the c value and as a result of increase in c more potential energy can be stored on the capacitor two you can infer from this equation that if you are asked to transfer charge Q from one plate to the other, the amount of work to be done would be less if the capacitance C of the capacitor is more considering C is in the denominator. So higher the capacitance, easier it is to load up a fixed amount of charge on the capacitor. Now, we will end this lesson by understanding the concept of energy storage in a capacitor as energy stored in the vacuum between the plates or this volumetric space between the plates. So, we saw that a capacitor can be charged by moving electrons from one plate to the other and when we do that, work needs to be done against the electric field between the plates and this work done shows up as stored potential energy in the capacitor. So we can think of the energy as being stored in the field that exists in the region between the plates or the volumetric space between the plates. So let us go ahead and see if we can establish this relationship between energy stored and the electric field between the plates. Well, if we express energy stored in a capacitor in terms of unit volume of the space between the plates, we can say that the energy stored per unit volume, or let us call it energy density, denoted by small u as equal to half Cv squared divided by volume Ad. And if we substitute the value of C as epsilon naught A by D, and for V, we put ed this term can be written as u is equal to half epsilon naught e square and this is the energy density in the vacuum between the plates now while we have derived this relationship for a parallel plate capacitor this expression is true for any shape of capacitor now what is interesting about this derivation is that Traditionally, vacuum is considered as empty space, but then you see that vacuum can have electric field and also store energy.